Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm bringing you my 2021 favourites. Items that I have purchased in 2021 and have fast become favourites in my collection and items that I have just used and used and used in 2021 that I may not have bought in 2021. So this video was inspired by both Paula and Mary, Paula's channel Touch of Luxury and Mary at Lumi Level Up. They are both wonderful newcomers to YouTube. I'm a newcomer to YouTube as well. I'll be two years in April but both of these women are just in their first year I believe of YouTube and they are both funny. They both have unique and exquisite taste in luxury items and they also are interesting to listen to. I highly recommend going and checking out their channels. Paula started with her 2021 favorites recap. Mary loved the format of her video and she turned it into a tag and threw it out there. So together, um, let's bring some love and attention to their channels as well. So I'm jumping on board sharing with you my 2021 favorites, luxury and some things not so luxury, but I shall explain why. I've also added a category. So originally they had five categories which were uh, makeup and cosmetics, clothes, shoes, SLGs, bags and home. That's six categories, Dale. And I'm adding a seventh, which is jewellery and accessories. So uh, where will I start? Makeup and cosmetics. And look, I haven't kept it short, but this is favourites. So I have just taken the top, the ones that I love the most. And I, I had a great year for cosmetics and makeup this year. So a few things that I want to share. And I guess we'll start in... The shower. <laughs> um, I discovered Dauphine Paris um, this year and I discovered it in Mecca Maxima here in Australia which is kind of the Australian owned version of Sephora. This is the Water Lily Cleansing Foam Gel. It is amazing. This is my third repurchase of this. I love the smell of it. I love how it cleans my skin. I love the texture of it. It's just a real treat when you wash your face. I highly, I keep flinging it around like this because I'm so excited, but I really highly recommend this one. And uh, yeah, as I said, I've repurchased this now. This is my third time and I usually have a spare one as well so that I can travel with one and have one in my shower. The next one when it comes to skincare is, again, a third repurchase, is the Verso Hydration Serum with Niacinamide. This is just a dream on your skin and it's from Sweden. Uh, and this was recommended to me when I was trying to find a really nice um, textured a hydrating serum and I was just finding that they're a bit watery or a bit this and that. This particular one, I'll put some on my hand and show you because this is my, uh, hopefully they haven't sold out of it. But um, if I pop that on here, you can see that it has this kind of milky texture, but it's also quite like a serum. And it just, it's just, it smells clean. It's probably got a like a slight powder smell to it, but it's super, super hydrating. You're not going to be able to see that, but you just have to trust me. Third repurchase on this one. I love it. And then finally from the skincare, because I had to be brutal, um, I have chosen the Dauphine Hydra Skin Light Moisturizer. You can see that this one is approaching empty again. And this will, my next one will be my fourth repurchase of this because hubby pinches it. And again, it smells divine. Sorry, I can't say hubby, Mr. Addiction. It smells amazing. It hydrates your skin. Like I just, it feels like a treat every time I use it. So you're not going to be able to see it, but it it's just oh, stunning. Now I'm going to link all of the names of these things in the description box below, but I'm not providing links on where to find them. I'm not at a point where I'm a salesperson here on YouTube and 
I know that for the same recommendations that I could get a payback and all of that jazz, look, I can't be bothered doing all of that stuff. I'll just put the names of the products. You can copy and paste them into your Google web browser and then you can find them. And then we're all happy and no one's doing any extra unnecessary work that they don't need to. All right, let's stick with the face department. If you have been watching me for a little while, you know the saga that I went through in trying to secure a supply of my favorite, favorite skin tint. This is the Hourglass Illusion Skin Tint, and I take the beige shade, and yes, those of you who have tried it and seen beige know that it's quite dark, because I am quite dark. But if you look at the texture of my face, I don't have filters or anything on. This is a really light coverage, but it just, it just gives you that bit of dewy, fresh, healthy skin look, and it kind of just evens out skin tone and I absolutely love it. Now this one, um, I think I purchased the three of these at the end of October. So this one you can see I'm, I've still got quite a lot left and you can get every scrap out of these little um, containers as well because you can bend them and manipulate them in all different kinds of ways to get all the product out. And I've got two here because I cannot run out again. I spent a lot of money trying a lot of different alternatives and nothing came close to this one. I've forgotten how many times I've repurchased that. Another big win for me in makeup was the Too Faced Born This Way, the Natural Nudes Palette. Now, um, I'm sure this works for everyone because it is nudes, but I've had a good old crack at this palette and it's not very often that I hit pan in palettes I, they're a little bit novel for me I might get sick of them obviously there's three colors that I use quite a lot but I also use this one and this one quite a lot as well and then in the darker ones I'm just touching on those like to kind of shade the eye area and what have you but this palette is the one palette that I pick if I've got to travel and space is limited to take with me because there are so many different options and looks that you can create from this palette and the final one is, I have lost count again how many times I've bought this, is the Dior Lip Glow in 001, the original. I don't get the tinted ones um, because even though I really love this, I find that you have to keep reapplying it um, because it's not really a lip balm. It says it's a color reviver balm. What that means is this one, it just brings out the natural color of your lips. So it's really complementary to your skin tone and your face. Um, but I, uh, I can go through this really quickly because it just comes off. So um, I wouldn't, um, and with all the masks that we've been wearing, I, I think that this is a great one. Um, so that you feel like you've finished in a way, but you're not putting a whole bunch of lippy inside your mask either. Into hair, look, hair was uh, a challenging category for me this year because I tried a lot. I tried a lot of things. I've been lightening my hair, um, and I, to be truth be told, I haven't really been happy, a hundred percent happy with the texture of my hair with the products that I've been using. And I've been using a lot of Kevin Murphy products, and yes, they worked, but. It was still quite an effort to do my hair and I just felt like that's not really how it should be when you're paying like $50 for a bottle of product. And so I've recently purchased the Olaplex range, um, number three, four and five. Uh, my first shampoo and condition with four and five was really good. Um, my hair texture was just blowing it out, not doing anything to it was way better. So I'm going to use that for a few more goes and then give you a bit of a review on that one. And yes, I'm late to the Olaplex party. Um, so the one thing though that has held me through 2021, uh, is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Days. And this is the dry shampoo. This is the travel size. This stuff is, it smells fresh, it does the job, I've got brunette hair, I don't get a powdery white look, it's fantastic. Um, and I always like to have one of these in my travel bag, so I need to stop using it because um, it's like, I think for this little one here it's like $20, and for the big one it's about $40, so it's, it is a bit of a luxury product, but it's amazing. And to fragrance, this is a long category, I'm 10 minutes in, I need to hurry up. Uh, this is my second um, refill, 
my first refill, sorry, but my second bottle of the Louis Vuitton Rose de Vence. Um, I love this. This has replaced my love for Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. In fact, that smells really chemically, uh, chemically, is that, can I even say that? I don't find it as pleasant a scent as what I used to. These are just different. I don't know. And what I have been doing is I've been wearing this one through the day and then I got my Stella Times. Um, when did I get that? Was it November? November or December? And then I put a few sprays of this on over the top of the Rose de Vons and boof, it's amazing. So I have absolutely loved getting into the Louis Vuitton fragrance game and I'm hoping that this is not the start of another addiction for me. Okay, let's move to clothes. Now, I think I've mentioned it here before, but I do not buy designer ready to wear because it doesn't fit me. So I do dabble in the high street, obviously. I'm not, I don't buy Zara, I don't buy H&M, nothing against people who do, I just don't. I don't like it. Um, I think it's the it's the material and being here in Brisbane, there's not a lot of natural fibres and so you tend to, you need things that can breathe. So the first thing that uh, I wanted to mention and I'll show it actually, I'll show it through Instagram photos. I, I have them here but it's not really going to show you anything, um, is my French Connection joggers. Now I will put some pictures over here um, to show you what I'm talking about but these are I think they're about are they about $80 a pair I think and on me I, I find it hard to get things like joggers that actually fit properly because normally they're very high-waisted and it just looks like a big elephant bum at the back and I do not want that look I bought these um, in the natural color originally um, the in 2020 and then last year I picked them up in the black stone wash look the blue stone wash look um, I think I've got pictures of both of those I've, oh, I got the pink ones which I definitely wore quite a few times and I got the denim looking ones so I'll just show them to you so they're like this kind of jogger kind of material. I wore these with my trench. Here's the blue ones as well. I wore these with my trench and a pair of sneakers. I wear them really casually. I liked wearing them with my big white coat coming up. Um, and recently, if you saw my vlog where I did my Peloton Peloton preview, I discovered that they made a skirt in the same fabric. So I bought the acid wash denim skirt. So I think that these are just favorites of mine. And if you're someone who's tiny or you're someone who would be plus size, uh, these are true to size. In fact, they're kind of generous. They're comfortable. They're like an elevated um, tracky pant, I suppose. And you can style them. You can wear them around the house or you can style them up with a lovely um, pair of designer trainers and an oversized jumper or whatever and and a coat and a crossbody bag and you're done and yeah I really really love them. The next piece that I wanted to share with you is my white wool coat from Country Road that took a long time for me to chase down. Um, very quickly I tried it on when it first came out it was quite an investment I think it was about $500 I tried it on um, and I liked it and I thought I'll wait for that to go on sale well it sold out it sold out and it came in two sizes medium large and small medium so I exhausted all my options I rang around Australia nobody could help me and then I happened to go into Country Road and they had one on the rack so obviously a return immaculate condition but it was a small medium and I thought what the heck I'll just try it because it is an oversized style and it fit so I bought it home and I wore the heck out of it and I never thought a white wool coat would be so practical but oh my god it's super chic I love how I could make it really casual and I could also make it really dressy and yeah great a great great buy and I won't hesitate on things like that again 
Uh, I also invested in my first pair of non-skinny jeans this year and look, I'm not convinced that non-skinny jeans are for me long term, but I did really enjoy dabbling in a straight leg wedgie from Levi, uh, but they in a distressed look. And for me, I think having a more curvy shape, the distressing kind of takes away from that just heaps of denim look because they're not particularly slimming per se. So I really enjoyed those and would highly recommend those um, as a straight leg option for somebody who's looking for something a little different but long live the skinny jean life I say. And then finally a late one to the list but definitely get my cost per wear and I will continue to is my Zimmerman Moonshine Drop Waist Dress from the not most recent collection, the one before I think. It's still available now on the website and it also comes in a longer length which I'm trying to stay away from. I love this dress. I love it as a casual dress um, just with a pair of slides or I like it elevated with a pair of heels. I think it would look cute with a pair of um, designer trainers. I say designer trainers because that's what I gravitate towards. Uh, but I just love the colours for me and my colouring and um, and a lot of other people have complimented me on that dress too. So I assume that that's a universal thumbs up for that dress. Moving into shoes, new to me this year, these Chanel black and white trainers, they also come with a white lace and I unboxed these on Instagram shortly after I got my Chanel 19. Um, my essay is ghosting me at the moment, I'm not getting any returns from my texts so I'm gathering it's everyone for their for themselves when the new 22p season launches because i'm not getting any airtime at all uh anyway side note um but yeah loved these love wearing them with jeans love wearing them with dresses um they've stayed relatively clean i have used my jason shoe cleaner on them just around the edges and um and i did tread in dog poo with these on and they're fine so uh love them also purchased this year my first pair of Iran sandals. What's the big deal about these? Well, I don't know. They, they're not the most comfortable, but you can see I've really stretched mine out now because we've had a few good summer days where I've been able to get my foot right into them. I just love the feeling that I have when I wear them. Uh, it's that shallow for me. And um, they just take your outfit to the next level even if you're really casual like I am so I've really enjoyed them I want to look at some different colors I'm thinking I could potentially go black with these and try them so and perhaps a pair of metallics as well the final pair of shoes I've had longer than 2021 but they continue to deliver and I could have shared a few more pairs of shoes to be honest um, but I chose to share these ones um, and these are the Stuart Weitzman nearly naked block heel sandals. These are just the perfect colours um, for, for me and elongating my leg to take an, an outfit from pretty casual to next level just with a pair of shoes um, and they're super comfortable to a point um, I will usually get sore feet anyway because um, my feet are a bit sensitive to heels but having the block heel and um, what do we call it moderating how long you're standing uh they are still super comfortable people who are used to heels would find these really easy right in terms of small leather goods uh pretty pretty standard for me actually so i did buy a couple of things this year um but it's the things that I had previously that have continued to be my favorites. Um, the first one is this Chanel flat card holder with the embossed croc design from the Chanel Graffiti Egyptian range. Uh, I think it was 2018 or something. Um, anyway, uh, this is just so soft and so useful. I default to this. I, I always do. I really, really love it. And my Louis Vuitton six ring key holder in Epi Noir. Again, it's an everyday it's an everyday item for me and I always do it back to front when I'm on YouTube. It's an everyday item. Very subtle, very easy to slip in any bag. 
Now, two new purchases in SLGs for the year. These two beautiful babes in the same fabulous hue that stole my heart in 2021. I prefer to use this one just because it's flat and it has way more organization than this one, which is pretty, but it doesn't have the organization that the other one has. And when you um, look at that accordion style, it's actually a little bit annoying compared to the Bottega Veneta wallet, which has all the card spaces there, then the bill compartment, and obviously the zippy pouch for coins. In terms of bags, boy, did I make some purchases in 2021. But my favorites uh, for 2021 um, include this new purchase. Now I've twisted it all up because I was trying to subtly do the strap, which is my Prada re-edition in the Safiano leather. And this color is Water Lily. It is a blush kind of nude beige color with the light gold hardware it's a beautiful bag that i have worn quite a lot not lately but um that's because i haven't been traveling much but it's definitely one of those bags that i love to wear traveling and i love to have with me when i travel because of the versatility of the day to night options one of my continuing favorites from 2020 into 2021 has to be my Gucci linear wicker bag, we'll just call it. This just continues to make me smile. Um, and yeah, I, I did not buy it in 2021, but it has remained a favorite. If you saw my bag collection video, you'll know that my number one used bag was my Chanel GST and that's because I used it for work a lot in the city. This bag, I don't know why it gets so much shade. I absolutely love it. It elevates any outfit. A bag that I didn't think that I would be purchasing in 2021, which I just adore, is my Louis Vuitton Capucines with the shoe shoe handle. This is, um, I was so happy to have found the capucine bag in a style that I like with that little playful edge and I did see that Saki got this in the baby pink too and it's just glorious it really is a beautiful beautiful bag this is in the BB size and then finally to end the year I finally ripped the band-aid off and I bought the Louis Vuitton trunk clutch and boy I'm happy I did this has like it's i could pick this up for any occasion in fact i've got to stop myself from picking it up i really enjoyed using this over the party season and i will continue to use this as a casual bag and a day to night bag moving forward now for luxury homewares uh there's only one and that's my louis vuitton flower trunk now i had a little bit of a false start with this one in the middle of the year and everything was um came back beautifully again just in time for my birthday in November this year this is such a gorgeous piece I am um, enjoying styling it up I love the fact that it's got these wooden pieces on it that replicate the actual steamer trunks and I am looking forward to when it's my turn to have this baby um, painted and being able to personalize it somewhat in addition to that, we had our whole house painted this year and that was quite an investment on the outside anyway. That was quite an investment. And so I'm going to put that on the list and also I invested in a huge full-length mirror, um, both for decor but also helps with outfit of the day. And you see that in my Instagram feed pretty much every day. Okay, and finally, accessories. Now, you may have noticed that I'm wearing my Louis Vuitton Cruiser earrings. These are my buy of 2021. They are such a favorite. Uh, I have continued to rave on about them. I just think that they work for any occasion, and I would highly recommend them. In fact, quite a few of you have purchased them from seeing them on my channel, and I hope you're enjoying them. I also bought and really love this style, which is the Louis Set. Um, earrings and these are just a really modern take on the Dior tribals and I love them I think I could easily buy more of these and I have featured them on my channel before and also in 2021 which a pair of earrings that I've worn a lot have been these Chanel earrings and I think they were from around 
April, I'm going to say, April or May that I bought these and I could have bought these in gold as well. And finally, these Fendi Havana FF sunglasses. A lot of you comment on these in my vlogs and on Instagram. I purchased these from Vision Direct um, by recommendation of Connor. I went looking for Fendi Sunnies. I saw these in the cat eye section. They're subtle enough, but they're Fendi enough, and they've been an absolute winner. The only problem that I have with these is that they have these little nose pieces, and they do leave a little mark on my nose. So sometimes when I wear them, I do have to take like a little bit of powder or something to pat my nose back into place. But that's everything from my 2021 favourites. It's been a bit of a slog, hasn't it? I hope you have enjoyed this video. Tell me what your favourites have been. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what your favourites have been. I put out videos usually on Wednesdays and Sundays, but when I have capacity, you will get more. So if you haven't already, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Bye.